Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and uh, you are still watching The Breakfast Show. And in this segment of our program, we will talk about the government efforts to spread the culture of entrepreneurship support, small and medium enterprises and uh, youth projects in general. And we are joined today by Dr. Mahmoud Baraka, uh, Strategic uh, Management Counselor. Good morning. Good morning. So, sir, uh, let's uh, begin uh, by um, the role of small and medium enterprises in supporting the national economy and how important is uh, the transformation of these inter enterprises from informal economy to formal economy? So, let's put the question first in two parts. Yes. Our SME is really important in the economy, small and medium enterprises are really important in the economy. So, mm. let's think of it. N now, if you are the owner of a big company or a mega mm. project, and you want to outsource some services, you don't need another big company with very high fixed costs which are translated into much higher prices. You just need to have someone who is really good at the job to do it for you. And the other thing is that whenever you're giving, having a big company, for example, working for real estate, working yes. in the food and beverage sector, working in the FMCG sector, working in the telecommunication sector, mm. there are lots, lots of derived demand, other services and the products that can be made by much smaller institutions, mm. much smaller enterprises. So it's a complementary relationship. It's a complementary, always bounded with a strong bound relationship. So if you, if you are asking about, is it good to get things from the form, the non-formal, informal to the formal mm. economy? Yeah, sure, it's better. F for, f from which perspective are we talking? That's also important. If I'm now uh, the owner of a small company, first of all, I, I would think that's really a headache. I have to be more compliant with the, with the tax system. I have to be more compliant. I'm headed now, everything is clear, I don't get out invoices, everything is, is good mm. because I think of it is as a liability. Sometimes, at, certain, at some points, they may be right, but the, the, the most strong part is that they must know when they are now open to the former economy, they will get other services. Mm. They will be open to the better uh, pool of labor. They are open for research institutions, they are uh, open for insurance. They are open for uh, the ability to go in bigger t into bigger tenders, the ability to go into the export systems, the ability to be eligible for the, the, the other quality certificates. When you go formal, really, you have so many other things that can help you to, to put your things into the right trackers and to go bigger and to dream bigger. And also this will, if you are having this enterprise, enterprise is sum of people. The sum of people when you go formal, it gives the, the, the right for the, the labor and the employees inside those small institutions to go sometimes and ask for their rights. To uh, th this guy may, may of the, the medium enterprise that may have 100 mm -hmm. to 200 employees may go further and ask for to be part of uh, um, employment fair and to get the, the better pool of employees. So it's really important and for the country, f for, for sure, it, lots of taxes because most of the economy is mm. small enterprise. And as we got shown the, the last period, it was mostly informal. So what is your advice to uh, young uh, Egyptians who want to start their, uh, their own projects and not to wait for uh, a job? Okay, L let's, let's talk about something. Uh, some years ago, we were not able to work anywhere except you are working for some big organization or for the government. Mm. And even those who work for smaller organizations or the small business or the micro and nano business, they were mostly talking about handicrafts or working in a non-prestigious mm. mood or you can really find white collars people with a high degree of education that work for small enterprises. The medium enterprises have many white collars, but for the small, this was rare. Now with the internet, things become like we d you democratize the opportunity, become more democratic, they become more available. Every one of us has his certain life cycle, and every one of us want to accomplish and to achieve. If you are looking even for a job in other place, why not to learn some hustle? Why not to get your hands dirty in some fields before getting to the job? By the way, this will make you much more expensive when you get exposed to the job because you know how the job is going to be done. 
you have your hands on experience on the job and this actually will add to your price to the enterprise whatever it's a medium or bigger enterprise national or international multinational enterprise they seek those people who can do the job hmm. maybe you are not fluent in english maybe you don't have the highest degrees possible maybe you're not lucky enough to study in the brightest institutions but at the end you know it you have your attitude you have your behavior and really the markets tell us how to behave the markets tell us how to think hmm. the markets give us the opportunity to understand the economics of the things how things really work in life so become really realistic on the other hand this does something on the social fabric level that it gets people less frustrated hmm. and on the other hand more having still the ability to dream for tomorrow hmm. so working for uh, uh, or looking for doing their own thing it, it, it is really a necessity nowadays, not only a possibility. Maybe also years ago it was not clear where will I go? Will I have funds? Can I have teammates? New how ideas. to do a job? And new ideas is very important. Um, how to get ideas? Hmm. I think now we have like daily hundreds of initiatives everywhere in Egypt that mm. people have to do things. Mm. Maybe those initiatives didn't have the full accessibility to everyone, but the good news is that they exist. Somebody cares. Maybe for different intentions, maybe for the good or for the bad, but they care. Somebody cares. There are money allocated, there's money allocated to such causes here. Yeah, there are money allocated to such causes. They are there. Maybe you have to knock, may have to be somehow um, creative. Having more perseverance and knocking. Mm. Uh, creativity is a must. Yes. Yeah, and creativity to not, not to, to have the, the, the next uh, Google. Mm. But just, you know, in, in th there was a very important story. Someone of the very well known uh, businessman in India took his son mm. to uh, a very big uh, street in Mumbai uh, where, where there is the stock market there. And actually the son was putting into his mind that he's going to have like a look on his father's stocks and how to learn how the stock markets work. And he was astonished that his father told him that to look at the streets and look at those ladies who are just sitting by the streets. Those ladies were getting the sand because in Mumbai there are really, really some very poor places. They are getting the sand from their uh, home. Uh, rural, uh, rural place and they put it on the streets early in the morning so when the cars pass by it become more granular and it become more tough so they use it to wash hmm. they, they get it back and yes. they get it back to their homes and they sell it because the women really buy it to wash the uh, plates and wash the things yes. because that's the only thing you the, the entrepreneur is someone who can put new possibilities on the ground and while most of the entrepreneurs are young because actually know what is the impossible they do not know they do not know what is not working hmm. so they may come up with something that no one was able to come with I, I was surprised that some of the big contests here in international egypt may be coming from the european union from the usa and and why so because actually they do not know the solution maybe someone in in, in egypt someone in the other country may find them the solution and whatever would be the price, they will pay him. They need a solution to the problem. Hmm. Find a creative solution that has a market, and you'll find it. Because basically, every entrepreneur ends by a business model. Business model, the word model is a mathematical model, means equation. Voila, you found a new equation. Yes. You found a new way of doing the thing. Hmm. Maybe you invade the process, you invade the whole thing. It's a totally new thing. So let them stand by the side, congratulate you. And to go there only to celebrate what you did. You need this. Because if the substitute for this is to wait for the job, it's your right to have a job. Yes. <laughs> but actually that's not always possible. Yes. That's what's not in your hand. Hmm. So let's control what's in our hands. So sir, how do you see the importance of legislative and institutional reform in developing small and medium enterprises as uh, we can all see that the economy of many countries like China and India can, uh, depends uh, on uh, small and medium enterprises and it is very important in uh, the advance of any economy. 
So how do you see the government efforts to uh, develop small and medium enterprises in general? I, I think now it's uh, under the microscopic vision. Yes. Uh, but but uh, let's, uh, the, the, the are really concerned with this, but let's s say why it really matters. Mm. So wh what is the government in essence? Mm. You know, when there is governance, the word governance means that someone who is sure that every party gets fair treatment. So when there are new rules to the game, mm. there must be new rulers putting new duties and putting new boundaries and putting new parameters for the rights and for the duties and responsibilities and for the authorities mm. and that's all new and that they are starting to do and you can see it in our financial sector the fintech part mm. and how the, the country is also offering these things maybe it's not still digested by the, the society 100 percent but it's there and it's being worked on these days uh, are we getting a shot in the legislative? Still not as uh, we can see the ambition of the, the young entrepreneurs in Egypt. Uh, away fr from th this, sh this shot, uh, is it really concerned? Yes, it's concerned. Are they working on it? I think, yes, they are working on it. Because I, I knew that some of the, our representatives in the council uh, they, they, they really work it on getting new laws and they were negotiating hardly and harshly how the entrepreneurs should have their uh, own governed ecosystem because one of the things that if someone had a very big idea and someone stole it, what we will do? Mm. And this happens every day, everywhere. If someone want to uh, have fund, is this a right or is this he should do by effort? Is there uh, how this fund will be governed? how the institution man managing those funds will be governed. So you think that we need a complete system a complete, to support yeah. uh, small and medium enterprises and support young entrepreneurs? And, and you know, exactly, yes. And, mm. and because now we are having so many institutions working in the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Ecosystem, yes, it's and like an environment. Having people playing different yes. roles and they should be integrated together. Some align and integrate, some do not align and integrate. So there is nobody aligning all of these people. Mm. No, no one to put who should work with whom on what basis. So you think we need some coordination uh, and collaboration? Some governance. Yes. And that's for the rules that you just said. And okay. that's, I think, what the government is working on now. We need some governance. Mm. We need something that entitles how should we direct, are, are we directing our uh, uh, entrepreneurship efforts right now? Mm. We are having like one million, for example, that's mm. an example, one million entrepreneur. Mm. Where will they go? Agriculture, industrial excellence, tourism, where will they go? So service so sector, fintech, where will they go? Transportation. Mm. So uh, are we want to put this entrepreneurship efforts to solve our problems, maybe to solve other people's problems by coordination in other countries? We are having power, we are having youth. Hmm. So, sir, uh, how important uh, is training and the capacity development uh, for youths uh, to make them able to start uh, their own jobs and be successful entrepreneurs? Do you believe in... It's highly essential. Uh, yes. It's, it's highly essential. It's important uh, to, de to develop them and uh, provide them with more skills. Uh, right? Yeah, and actually I see most people go with hmm. the wrong foot on this. Yes. Because w when they go to training the entrepreneurs, uh, they, they just, m most, most of them, not all of them, most of them just copy. Do we have these training in institutions yeah, sure, nowadays? Yeah, sure, yes. very prestigious ones. Uh, and people can apply, especially youths, of course, to, to uh, get th training. Th that's the issue. Most of the, the trainers, not all of them, some mm. of them are really brilliant, but most of them are just copying. You know, entrepreneurship is a social mindset. Yes. So they are just copying what was working exactly in the USA, for example, or UK, mm. uh, with their education system, with their social fabric, with their uh, circumstances and uh, social environment, and they copy the same thing. And still, we have a different and experience in Egypt. Exactly, mm. different thing, different, d different everything, different life, different, different expectations, mm. different economic conditions. As an entrepreneur, my, my struggles must be concerned. I have mm. a daily struggle. Mm. I have a daily struggle. Will I take a loan? Do I trust to take a loan? Do I have other responsibilities? Mm. Do I have a family? W women, women role entrepreneurship. 
for example. Yes. Most of them are child bearers and they are having family, looking after their maybe father and mother as well. In mm -hmm. many of our uh, uh, cities and villages here, Th their circumstances and these collaterals must be concerned to be in cons into consideration. Yes. So, sir, uh, uh, to what extent uh, do small and medium enterprises uh, com uh, contribute to providing uh, job opportunities uh, for youth nowadays? I think it's more than it's solving, 70%. Is it solving the problem of unemployment more, to some more, extent? More than 70%. 70%. Yeah, because w w what is easier to be done, a mega enterprise or a small enterprise? A small one is small, easier. Small, yes. Right? So uh, if, if now I, I work, who, who is more ambitious to growth? The bigger one or the smaller one? Mm, the smaller. The smaller one. Who is easier to, to be accessible as an employer? The smaller or the bigger one? So wh why, the labor, wh why there is sometimes unemployment? Because either my skill is out of demand mm. or uh, I am underpaid or there are not enough jobs. Mm. Right? So w when there is many small enterprises that are easy to be made, that are easy to be tried, maybe they are short living organizations most of them not live that much that so many years at the bigger enterprises but actually they offer experiences they offer trainings they offer real life context that people work on and it really contributes a lot in the, in the employment thing look at the cvs when you employ someone you will find like four or five of his ex companies are small companies and now you really know how to do the job because when you are a big organization, you are just very specialized in a very small part of the thing. Mm. Mostly, not always. But when you are a small organization, you are doing multitasks and doing very big range jobs. And you are doing so many things that may be interrelated. Or you may try to learn something that are totally out of your scope because you have to do the job as it should be done. Because we are a really small community and we know each other and we are eager to have our company to be bigger. This spirit is really mainly for the small and medium enterprises. Mm. And this puts lots of the skills in the weight of the country. You know, when the country have like one million citizens, we should sum the competencies of these one million citizens. And we, we say those are our countries or youth competencies. Small enterprises really build very good competencies for those. So it's, uh, we, we can see now that the concept of only working in multinationals and big companies is... Uh, Let the them wait. Yes. They want to work in a multinational. Yes. Because uh, now you are giving the multinational much more uh, like bargaining power yes. as an employer. This he, was uh, the theory long ago. Working in multinationals and big companies is uh, the only way to get experience. But now, as you've just said, that working in small companies also gives uh, sure. Yes. Yeah. Much sure. More gives experience. experience. Because who opens the small enterprise? Mostly, who was someone from the multinational. Yes. He was someone for a big company that he got some sum of money and he wanted to open something new. Hmm. Maybe he doesn't have all the experience, but he can give you a hint of the multinational experience. On the other hand, he will do something in an unusual way and this will give you much more experience. Hmm. And when the multinational will want to go to be more efficient, it will hire someone like you, maybe someday. Yes. But sometimes for some industry, they insist that it must be someone from the same industry exactly. So, sir, uh, what mechanisms should uh, be taken to achieve integration between, between small and medium enterprises and large-sized enterprises? Let's talk about the fear side. Hmm. The fear side. Hmm. So, wh wh what make the, the bigger enterprises fearful of dealing with yes. medium and small enterprises? Maybe quality issues and delivery issues, hmm. right? So, put for them standards. Let them assign four standards, and that's more happening now for the, the TV standards, the, the ISO standards, and so on. Maybe some of them are cliche, but mm. really we have to work on a national standard or a national portal that says that those people are eligible and they are having the right mm. to deliver such like the third grade of quality and the standard, the first grade of quality and standard. They have to get quality and standard. And what fears the, 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 the smaller many enterprises from the, the big enterprises, the cash delivery. Will they pay us really well or not? Mm. Will they pay on time or not? When you're a big enterprise, for example, I'm someone that I can produce 100 units per day, and you're a big enterprise, maybe you will ask for, for, more, for 200 units. So I may invest some capital to give you the 200 units, but now you are my only and main customer. And this puts in your hand high bargaining power, very high bargaining power. Mm. And this may end in the, the end of the... So an enterprise, it's a kind of mutual trust. This trust that he will give us the right quality at the right time 
that is competitive at a very good price and I will get sure that there is something that tells me that this guy will pay me my effort. So Sarah, well, uh, finally, uh, before wrapping up this interesting interview, as the whole world was uh, celebrating yesterday International Women's Day, yeah. uh, let's talk about women's participation in establishing small and medium enterprises and uh, the impact of this on development in general. Okay. Like, women like men are part of the society, really yes. the most important part from my point of view, mm. because nowadays they are playing, according to our social circumstances, they are playing multiple roles, S some so many of them are just carrying the whole family on their shoulders. Uh, I, I don't like to talk in the gender way if it's a man or a woman. It's a kind of competencies. Yes. I'm talking about Egypt in particular because it has certain experience uh, with uh, women empowerment and uh, efforts are, are done now to achieve this. Sure. So, so w women really are th maybe uh, the hidden power for years. Yes. Yeah. And, and now we, we can see so many entrepreneurs that are really... Mm brilliant and they are doing great job and actually when they are going to recruit people they will not say well i could a man or a woman hmm. like you know when we go for i think that there is that's the day for women i see this against women not with women <laughs> yes okay. <laughs> okay because actually we're always working there yes. in some villages maybe this mm. wasn't happening they got more empowered mm. they got more accessible to knowledge more accessible to capital yes. and that's great because you had some some non-employed resources mm. human resources and now they are employed maybe for some some places it might be for a race for certain religious groups i mean some places maybe also egypt so the issue is not about women about that non-utilized yes. human resource that become much more utilized, that become much more efficient, that we, we were away from lots of the miracles that be, can be done by other people, that we become now into the job and labor market fabric, hmm. and they're doing a great job. And, and most of us, like everywhere, I think we are handling with half-half with, with our social partners as women. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Mahmoud uh, Baraka, Strategic Management Counselor. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. And uh, give your short break, and we'll be back, so stay tuned.